as our true rule, be said reality. We are not only you will learn how to use impact the ocean, but also how the ocean impacts you in return. Now you see why salt water is named salt water? So, out of the two types, we want fresh water, which is 2.5%, and this gets broken down into various categories because, as you will see, not all fresh water are created equal, or in this case, drinkable. Depending on who you ask, and which sources you look at, fresh water can be broken up into as little as 5 categories or as much as 11 categories. One of those sources that has the right amount of information breaks it down into 7 categories. Ice or glaciers, groundwater, lakes, soil moisture, living organisms, rivers, and atmosphere. Now, for drinkable water, we need to go to the groundwater category, which makes up only 0.5% percent of the entire water body and that comes out to be 1 quintillion 830 quadrillion 607 trillion 257 billion 600 million gallons. So now our soy has traveled a ways off the ocean and found itself in one of the aquifers in the United States of America. If a person, company, entity, etc. wants to tap into groundwater for daily activities, it would primarily will depend on the water table and if it's confined or unconfined. The water table is where groundwater borderlines with mostly dry soil and Confined or unconfined means the geology that it's trapped over or absorbed by, depending on those factors, decides how the groundwater will be extracted. But in order for soil and all its bodies to be tapped into and extracted out of the ground since need to follow the law of the land, which has two primary laws, prior appropriation and riparian. Let's first start with the riparian law, or as it's formally named, the riparian doctrine. The riparian doctrine was formed based off of the 31 states are east of the Mississippi River, where water was more abundant, no need for irrigation or diversion of water, and there were no major water disputes. The doctrine is broken up into two main parts, the reasonable use principle and the correlative right principle. Reasonable use principle is simply that each landowner can divert as much water as they need as long as another landowner doesn't have physical proof of injury or damages made by those actions. Correlative right principle is simply to share the total flow of water with other landowners and to only use the same amount as you have overlooking your property. This doctrine basically binds the water rights with the property that you are living in without any contingency. Now, if the riparian doctrine deals with the states east of the Mississippi River, then the doctrine of prior appropriations must be for 
the states to the West, this doctrine has to deal with the practices of irrigation or the diversion of water and puts the water rights more onto the landowner or a water developer in this case, rather than the physical property itself. It also says that before any watering can begin, a judge or an appropriate administrator has to approve your diligence on completing any land development or construction project. Because of that, and with other unique scenarios, it can become really complicated really fast. So, there's two types of the same doctrine that came to be. One is the strict one called the Colorado Doctrine, and the second one that combines with the Riparian Doctrine is called the California Doctrine. Now, let's say you dealt with all the logistics and finally get to pump out that water. But wait, most of you probably don't do that, except you get the water from your town's city's municipality or from a large company that sells you that water. And since that's the case, our friends need to wait a little bit longer until it is free. The water needs to be pumped up from an area where there is minimal contamination before it can even begin. An area that would need to be deemed safe by the Wellhead Protection Program.